Welcome to the Boomer's Guide to a Vibrant Life with Vicki Washington. Uh, Vicki and her guests will share their journey of the golden years and how they're creating a vibrant life. Topics will include family, fun, life, love, travel, and everything Boomer. You too can have the best of your vibrant life now. We are broadcasting from Global Voice Radio every week. And now, here's your host, Vicki Washburn. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to A Boomer's Guide to a Vibrant Life. And tonight, my friend Fidel is on with me. And I'm sorry, I should have asked you, do you say your last name Ford or Ford A? It's Ford. You got it. Ford. Um, Fidel Ford. And Fidel is an entrepreneur, a proud military spouse, the father of four little people. He's combined his knowledge of empowerment, coaching, motivational speaker, massage therapist, and yoga instructor to help people get back in touch with their spark, kick stress to the curb, and have the energy to fuel their passion with the life they have, even if they're busy and don't know where to start. And I think that it is so important what you do for us boomers, because we kind of reach this age where we don't know what to do. You know, we're starting to retire, and that sounds all well and good. And then you do it for a couple of months, and it's like, well, what do I do now? So just like the younger generation may not know where to start, we kind of sit here and go, what now? So um, tell, us, tell me a little bit about how you motivate people to, to find that what now. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for that introduction. I, I really do think that we, we have way more in common than we do differences. Um, even at different ages, things just begin to shift. And, but it always comes back to this place of, you know, what now? Going into retirement, what now? Um, as a military spouse, you know, life is busy for me and for my family. And we move every three years. And so every three years, it's kind of like I'm coming into something different. Like, like what's now? You know, like for me um, and being able to having to figure out like what's now and be able to do this as often as I have and quickly begin to tap into that energy and that space and that clarity and that awareness of, of where things need to go and for everyone listening right now if, if you're asking what's now and what's next you're in a beautiful place because what this means is that now you actually get to Focus on, on you, focus on the things that, that maybe you might have put off or things you've all, this is a place of discovery that you get to discover and have fun with, with that process where you don't have to have it all figured out. You get to show up, you get to live and see what's available for you right now to begin to do um, and create the life that you want with the life that you have right now. Um, so when you talk about or ask me, you know, how do I inspire people? Um, what I hear most of the time is it's just my energy. Um, just the energy that I, that I bring to the table, that, that, that spark um, to begin to do that. And I do that in a few different ways. Um, through movement as a yoga instructor, I mean, we can actually move our way into what we want to come into. And we can't always think our way through something. We have to actually move our way, that physical component. And when we tap into that, that really helps unlock some of the energy where we can actually embody what it is that we want through our body and, and through movement and to feel strong, to feel capable. Because, you know, Vicky, as you know, if, if we can mentally know all the things that we need to do, but if we don't feel good in our body, right? If we, we, yeah. if we don't feel good, we can't do good, right? But when we, when we feel good, we start to do really good things. And when we start to move and increase our flexibility and when our balance begins to improve, we literally feel like we can do more. Um, there's this, it looks like there's something that you, that you want to say. Well, and, and you've got it, what you're talking about, about getting in your body. So many times we get in our head yes. and our head is what stops us from actually moving into that place that we really want to go. And sometimes we don't even really know where that place is, but we can feel it pulling us. And we maybe can't see it in our mind's eye, but we can feel that pull, that energy pulling us toward it, but we let our head get in the way. And so I know 
with a lot of the things I do, that's the thing I tell people, close your eyes, get present in your body. And that gets the head out of the way and shuts off that, those mind tapes that so many times can stop us. You know, and especially I think as, as we get older, fear sets in so much of the time and doubt in our ability as we age instead of just jumping in with both feet and going, you know what, I'm just going to see what this body can do. I love it. See what this body can do and explore. And, and you're right. And then especially come to a place where you've worked so hard and, and now here's your life and you've had to be logical. You've had to think your way through. You've had to make smart decisions and society kind of sets us up for that. And it's kind of like you have to wait for something to have a logical or to make sense in order to do it. Um, and there's this fear of if I do something different, what does this mean for the rest of my life? Like, am I going to undo anything? And that fear creeps in. And but you're so right. As you your body, you can literally feel a way forward versus thinking a way forward. So we can make sense of what we're feeling um, versus after the two is separate and begin to do that. Yeah, I I know I uh I just just to give you an example this weekend um my boyfriend and I did a 200 mile motorcycle ride. Wow. And for the week before I was so so apprehensive and so doubting my ability because I had not ridden in a while. Right. And I and I'm not going to sit here and tell you I was not tired when it was over, but it felt so good to just do it. It does. And you, you felt that feeling, right? And it's like, yeah. wow, and unlocking the possibilities on being able to, to, to do that. Yeah. Um, and just the confidence boost, you know, knowing how com just feeling comfortable on the bike. It just, you know, it was just a real, a real boost for me. Yeah. And, and that's what it's about right there. You know, what's going to create that, that pattern interruption from the, from the general routine. Yeah. Right. To kind of shift and get out of just the way the mind works sometimes. And so you can actually have an experience that's going to allow you to tap into all your senses and create a, a brand new pathway in your mind and unlocking the possibilities. It's tough to change. It's tough to do something different. It's tough to go out and try something new when we're stuck in that same routine. And we're going through that. And it's like, it's like you're, it feels like you're, like you're literally pulling weight. And the moment you try to do something, you feel that feeling in your gut that just like saying no. And then the voices get really loud and it makes you cringe up and your shoulders come up to your ears. And it's like you can't even speak anymore. And you're just like, ah, you just feel stuck. And often what's needed is, is, is an interruption, something that's going to switch the routine. And it's tough to do when you're on your own. And I think it's so cool that you have this podcast to help interrupt, you know, that lifestyle and the mindset and the thought process and to kind of create that shift. So going out and going on that motorcycle ride sounds like that was a great interruption and kind of get you back in tune with you where you're, you're feeling again and you're, you're feeling excited um, to do that. And that's that's one of the big things is to switch things up and do something different yeah. um, and get excited about process um, and on being able to do that. And I love how you said you do a, a exercises to get people out of their heads and into their bodies. And I think that's really a great place to start with figuring out where we are right now, where they are right now in their bodies, what's going on, how is pain showing up and when they feel pain, how does this trigger, what, what happens when these thoughts are happening and getting clear with what's driving the show. Cause I feel like oftentimes we start tolerating what's coming up and we're like, well, this is just a new normal and this is just how it is. Or this is just how it's always been. This is the way my body works and, and all that. When just tune into that conversation and really ask them question, is this serving me? And well, do I and, want to continue to, yeah, yeah? And our body will really tell us the truth. Our, our mind, body will tell us the truth. Our mind won't always tell us the truth. Mm -mm. But our body I, will always speak truth to us. And if we can just learn to listen with an yeah. open heart and an open mind and an open spirit, we can discern what our body is truly trying to tell us.
It's true. I mean, as, as a body mind coach, you know, believe in that, that you really have all the answers and all the wisdom in you. And so often we're, we're asking, looking for answers, you know, and instead of looking for answers, sometimes it's really about asking the right questions. And as we ask our body and we tune in and we ask the right questions, we'll get those answers. And if we're asking the wrong questions, our mind will, will fill in the blank um, and, and can give you the answer from the question that you've been setting. Right. But when we go into where do I need to be to feel my absolute best? Right. Like, like what yeah. is it that my body's asking for that's going to give me the allow me to be the best service to the world? Yeah. Like, what's going to make me feel alive and begin to do that? Yes. And when the brain and fear, all that comes in, it's our, our fear. Is, it's not even something that we should avoid. Um, you know, instead of trying to feel better, we just got to get better at feeling and listening to these voices. And if we start listening to our fear, I mean, we, what, what really happens is our fear is really just trying to keep us safe, right? Our mind wants to do what's familiar. We want to, we don't want to switch things out. We want, we want safety and survival and here we go. And when we know, it just wants to keep me safe with the familiar. I know what to expect. When we start listening to the fear, listening to the voices and asking, what are you really telling me? What, what's, what, okay. Um, and where does this come back from? Is, was this taught to me? And I, maybe I don't even want this to be true anymore. And we start to listen to it and we start to look at what we really want. It wakes us up to what we're tolerating. I right? love because how you said, um, uh, see, now I lost it. Um, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. Um, oh, gosh. It'll come fear. back to me. Yeah, fear, <laughs> loving, I've just got fear. wrapped up in listening to you and forgot yeah. what my thought was. So it'll, it'll come. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, so our, our fear is 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 a great part of us. It's, it's there's there to keep us safe. I know and, what it was. Uh, go for you it. Ask your body, how can I be of the best service? Mm -hmm. And that is such a beautiful thing. It's not just about you know, what can I get today or, or what can I accomplish today? But what is going to allow me to be the best that I can be so that I can be present in this world and I can be of benefit to this world and to others. And I just, I loved the way you said that. That just was so beautiful and Thank so you. true. And I think at this time, of our lives, we have such an incredible opportunity to do that. You know, it, when you're younger, like right now you've got kids and all their activities and, you know, our lives get so wrapped up in that part of our life that we don't really sometimes have the energy or the time or the focus to be of service to other people yeah. or to just be of service to the world. And then when you reach the age that I'm at, now you have the time. And a lot of times you have more resources because now you're not paying for soccer and ballet and right. piano and all these other things. And so you have time and you have resources. Now you just have to get in focus with what is calling you what is your yes. purpose um, t yes um and it's a beautiful discovery uh, like i feel like my purpose continues to evolve as i as i move forward and i take action it becomes clear and what begins to move you like inside is is insight towards what that purpose is. And sometimes your purpose is just to uncover your purpose, right? To, to, yeah. to play and to feel and just to live and to show up. And, and, oh man, another thing that's coming up for me right now is sometimes with purpose is really just to be present on purpose. Like that's good enough, just to be present yeah. on purpose. And in that, you get that insight. Um, but as we talk about even what kind of gets in the way of being present and, 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 and when you have the time and you, you have the resources now, um, I get to feel that that even the folks listening on the call right, right now, they spend this life of taking care of everybody else. 
um, you know, doing things for the workplace, making sure everybody else's needs are met. And, you know, they're so they're heart centered people that have been taking care of so many amazing people so that they can live the life that they want to live. And now they're in this place where they, they have the time and it's, they've been so used to taking care of everybody else. It's like, but I don't even know how to take care of me. Like, yeah. what does that actually look like? And, and even if they have the time and the resources, it's like, I, I can do it now. But then there's, there's guilt that, that yeah. comes in. Um, and, and we really have to slow down and get into where's that guilt coming from and literally having a conversation with that guilt. And I think some of that comes from there is this society and this mindset shift of when you make your priority, if any time you do something for yourself, there's this belief that it means you're taking away from other people. And then you're selfish. That you're selfish, right? So even yeah. if you have the time and the resources, it's like, ah, but I feel guilty now. Like, like yeah. I, I want to go schedule that massage. I know I have the money to do it, but man, but it's, it, I, I don't think I, I don't deserve being pampered right now. Right. Or, you know, I want to go to that yoga class, but man, are, are people going to, I don't know, what are people going to think of me doing yoga now? Like, I've never done anything like that. I don't, I don't want to fail at it. And yeah. I'm going to do that. And so, there, so there, there's, there's these conversations that go on and, and that guilt that shows up and and, and we're it's really funny happy. it's funny that that we let that come into our head but nobody would ever question if you went to the doctor no no you know right. and yet these are things that are really of such a great health benefit and such a great overall well-being which keeps us healthy and um and yet nobody would question if you went to the doctor and got a pill, but they'll question those kind of things that you might do for yourself. And we ourselves will question it, yeah. uh, whether it's valid or, or of value. Totally. And yet, again, we would never think twice about going to physical therapy or going, you know, to the doctor or having a and test this, run or anything and it's it's just it's insane that our mindset has gotten so skewed and and this is where we really have to take a close look at how is this serving us right um yeah. so we may feel like we 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 want to make ourselves a priority we may feel we may feel like we want to feel better in our body we may feel like i want more energy i want to wake up in the morning refreshed i want to do all these different things and that your body's aching and 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 you know you're getting old and all these things are happening but the truth is that you haven't made you have made yourself a priority um and that's the case for a lot of the clients that i work with and so it's not in so much that it's the lack of energy it's the mindset of making see yourself a priority and that, that belief that, it, that it's selfish. And so a lot of the work that I do is, is getting clear on and how is this serving you? And so, so if it's selfish, like what is, the, what is that giving you? And it's literally giving you the pain, the lack of energy and all that, right? And begin yeah. to do that. So we've got to get a crystal clear look at, 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 what, you're, at what people are tolerating right now. Yeah, um, that, and, that and, thought and, of selfishness and that thought of, uh, uh, not being worthy settles yeah. in your body totally in and, it's, and it manifests yeah. as pain as stiffness as oh man whatever um, i mean i have a uh, i did a retreat a few weeks ago and uh, someone at the retreat they've been having some shoulder pain for years um and as a massage service this is even someone i've worked on although we're opposite ends of the country i've had the opportunity to, to work on them massage wise and so i know what's going on in their body and i know what they're thinking and they're at my retreat and we're talking about this pain and and what was coming up in life. And they were talking about their work-life balance and, and, and even the things that they were doing. I mean, she, she, she's, in, she's in your population. She, still, she found a, a work that, that fills her up a little bit, and, but she's in pain. And um, I mean, she, she comes home exhausted and, and she felt like she's not having room to do things she really wants to do. And so as she was talking about things that were going on in her life right now, I asked the question, where are you feeling this right now? She took a moment to stop. And right there in her shoulder where she'd been having the pain, right? And as we talked about what it would be like to, to not have the pain, to, to, to our ideal lifestyle, what she wanted, immediately the pain went away. It was, it was so wild, just that trigger of, and so really what came up for her was not so much the, the work, it was not so much the fact of having the pain. What came up is that she didn't have any boundaries. And the reason why she didn't have any boundaries is because she was saying yes to everybody at work. 
work and overgiving and overdoing and 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 saying yes to everybody, all of her friends, things was coming up. But the only the one person she wasn't saying yes to was herself. Right? She had this feeling that she wasn't working hard enough yet. And that feeling of not working hard enough, um, not it not being okay to rest, just I just have to do, 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 was manifesting the pain. And immediately she began just to create a picture of what it would be like to set boundaries for herself and for other people and to say yes to herself. I mean, you can do that work and the pain has gone away. Isn't that wild? It is. It's, it's kind of crazy. It. I it's, see it's amazing. all the time. I yeah, see it's amazing. all the time. Um, I just went to a um, workshop with John Newton who does ancestral clearing. And, and that's exactly what he does is he just, focuses on you know okay so you have a pain in your knee well where does that come from really you know and so much of the time I asked him I said so how much how much of the pain that we suffer is truly physiological mm-hmm. he goes hardly any yeah. and isn't Our that body. amazing to think that truly most of what we suffer from is self one self-inflicted yeah two easily shifted by shifting our mindset yes shifting our mindset um you're you're so right on and the body has a mind of its own i mean so even as we shift the mindset we also still need to embody and and move into it because even with the shifting of the mindset we, we know the things that we need to do but getting to the point where we own it and it's embodied and we feel it and we move it. And that's where some of the movement comes in, where you want to like really get into the embodiment of it and feel that shift take place um, and begin to do that work. Um, we're talking about just, just why some people can't make that shift or the struggle of making that shift to actually do what it is that, that they want to do. And I think it's because they haven't really looked at what it's been costing them and what they yeah. really want. Yeah. Um, and, and that creates some of that motivation to get out of the comfort zone and to try something new. When you look at where we are right now, um, if someone's listening right now or just the clients that I'm working with, there's your comfort zone. It's if you're, if you're listening to this audio, imagine it's the circle. And in that circle, there's your comfort zone. There's your life as you know it. There's your routine. There's all those different things. Um, and here you are in your comfort zone. And in your comfort zone, it's very familiar. It's nice and cozy, it feels like, right? Um, you know exactly what to expect. Um, you know how the day goes. You have your friends that you want. And when we start to really look at what's really showing up in my life, what's going on in your body, where in your life is your satisfaction tank not 100% full, when you really start to tune into how you're feeling, how you respond to stress, are you really happy, like what's really happening? And then you start to look outside of your comfort zone a little bit of what you would actually love. Like what would it look like to, to have more energy, to have more love, to have more fulfilling relationships, like getting really clear on what it is that you actually want you begin to see that your comfort zone really isn't that comfortable. And then I, you begin to see, like, right? Because you, you don't get what you want. So you get what absolutely you, true. Totally. And the moment you, the closer you get to the edges of your comfort zone towards what the possibilities of doing something new, that's when the fear, your gremlins, those voices get really loud. Because they're like, hey, no, go right back to your comfort zone. Right, because yeah. you you know exactly what to expect there. You no, know, those people they're gonna think you're crazy, right? Or what's going on? You know, and so I even would... when those voices come up, right? Go ahead. When you, when you know for the fact that what you're tolerating though is not what you want, yeah. To go back and to stay in your comfort zone, you know that's the, the possibilities are better outside your comfort zone than in your comfort zone because you're already not having what you want in your comfort zone. Yeah. Right. And the voices are just loving to keep you safe. And just that's when you really talk to the talk to the fear, talk to what's going on and saying, you know what? You know, have a seat. (laughs) I hear you. I know you just want to keep me safe. But everything that I want is right over there. The energy that I want. And when we say yes to ourselves, it's not selfish. Right. It's it's actually the most loving thing. Here's the right question. Talk about questions. How is saying yes to yourself and making you a priority the, the most loving thing that you can do for other people. Like, at, if we can ask ourselves that question, we'll come up with those answers. 
So if I say yes to myself, yes to that yoga class, yes to movement, yes to stepping out, I'm going to feel more confident. I'm going to feel more empowered. I'm going to have more energy. And as a result of having more energy and more confidence and feeling better in my body, what can I give now as a result? You know, right? so, many and, times, so many times that's exactly what's happening to my generation is yeah. the comfort zone has been that job. The comfort zone has been the kids and the, and the spouse. And so many times at this age, all that's gone now. Yeah. All that that's been your comfort zone for the last 40 years is gone. Maybe, you know, the job you've retired from. The kids are grown and they maybe have moved out of state. So you're not seeing them all the time. Maybe the spouse, maybe you're divorced or or you've lost your spouse. My, my uncle just passed away this last week and my aunt and him have been together since she was 16 years old. She has just lost her comfort zone. You know, her whole world just changed in a flash. And that happens so much at our age. Um, and it happens so quickly. And then you're kind of stuck floundering because you are so used to that comfort zone. And, and you kind of have to mourn losing it. Yeah. But then once you're outside of it, I have not been in my comfort zone now for almost four years. I wake up every day completely not knowing what the heck is going to happen. I mean, truly. I, yeah. you know, it's just me now. Um, I'm a consultant. Well, you know, when you're a consultant, you may work and you might not. So yeah. every day I just wake up and go, thank you, God, that I have today and I can't wait to see what you give me. That's awesome. And it just, it's, and it's really been a beautiful thing to experience. And, and I was the person who wanted, I wanted to know what was going on. I, I don't, I'm, I wouldn't say I was a control freak because I really, I mean, I didn't really feel like I was in control, but, um, but I liked to know what was, you know, I liked routine. Yeah. I didn't like change. Change made me very uncomfortable. And I've had to just really learn to let that go. And now change is like, cool. What's this going to bring? You know, it's yeah. like a Christmas present. It's like, Oh, yay. What are we going to do? What are we going to get? You know, what's this going to bring? I love that shift. Um, and wow, I, I think that's so beautiful. And I think with a lot of people, like where that shift begins to happen or where they are right now is this, I have to prepare for the day. Like, because I don't know what's going to happen. Um, like, so I need to know what's, what's, what's going on so that I can, I can be prepared and be ready for it. Um, and so whether this is you or someone else was coming up for me too, there was this place that shifted where this mindset of I'm enough in any situation and it doesn't even matter what comes up in the day, that mindset or that belief of, of who you are, Vicky inside, like, like I'm enough in any, and when, when we can all switch and tap into that energy of, it doesn't matter what's coming up. I'm, I'm enough in every situation. I, if I can label maybe that shift, that's what it would be like bring it on like what's coming yeah. up what's here i'm enough and when you yeah. come from that place of being enough right already having the answers in your body like you talked about already having the wisdom you can navigate any situation any particular way um to begin to do that so i think and that's, that's what you said before that yeah. beautiful things start showing up yeah because out of that enoughness you now can go out and create if we're operating out of um so i, I kind of i don't know if i i, I jumped I skipped anything there, but the mindset went from I have to plan and prepare. And oftentimes we think we have to be prepared for these situations, but the truth is we might not feel like we're enough to handle it. Right? So that was the mindset piece. But if you were enough to handle it, what would it look like to be able to handle it? Yeah. And you've tapped into the energy of that, like, oh, okay. And been for you said for, for four years, you've been like, okay, growing that enoughness and creating that space where this is your new normal. Yeah. Right. And you're going on motorcycle rides. It's fantastic. Yeah, And it, you know, and it's just been, it's been crazy things that, you know, may seem silly to some people, but it's like a, a pipe broke. Okay. Yeah. I handled it. That was, 
that was a monumental thing for me. Yeah. And that happened early on when mm. I first became single because I didn't do home maintenance. Mm. I didn't do anything. I had my ex did all that and he was very good at it. Yeah. And to just even step into those little things that seem um, kind of trivial. Yeah. Just to step into those and say, I can do this. Mm. I can learn to do this and I can figure this out and, and I'm okay. I'm okay. Right. I'm okay today. And to know that I can just be okay today. I don't have to worry about being okay tomorrow. I can just be okay today. And, and, that's, and that's, that's good. And that's wonderful. Oh man, that's awesome. So one, one big mindset shift I know for, for me that has, has done wonders um, is this life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. Yes. And, and, and really begin not, not just to know it. We know this, but to really embody it. And one of the ways we embody it is how we apply it to situations that show up. And yeah. I love how you apply that towards the pipe, right? And it's yeah. kind of like this, this, here's a situation where, okay, how is this working for me? Right? And it's like, great. Um, I get to both empower myself and begin to take that and begin and grow in that. And like, if you can, if you can fix the pipe, what else can you do? Exactly. And so I feel like that takeaway question for like the audience is, you know, how, how are these things working for you? Yeah. Right? And, and then how is this an opportunity? And then how empowering would it feel to actually go out there and do that and tap into that question, that thought process and yeah. begin to do that work and shift and make it more tangible and, and make it more real. Yeah. Um, but and how I is have, this working for And I have my daughter and my granddaughter who are um, watching me do these things and, mm. and learning that wow. they can be empowering too. So, um, you know, as we, as we talk about this mind shift and, you know, a lot of people that are older like me um, get kind of stuck in their ways. And can be a little stubborn about, you know, making those shifts and, and um, can kind of let that negativity, you know, rule their, um, kind of rule their thoughts, I guess, you know, that sense of um, I'm too old for that or, you know, I don't want to you know, I, I know I had this experience with my mother-in-law. She would complain about being bored and, you know, when she quit working and just being bored and we'd say, well, why don't you go to the library and teach somebody to read, you know, volunteer. Oh, I'm not going to do that. You know, well, why don't you go to the hospital and volunteer? Well, I'm not going to do that. And, you know, so I think that that's one of the things that we as um, older generation need to work on. You know, we've got to work on keeping that positivity. And that is another way that moving your body helps because it kind of triggers those endorphins and yes, it, yes. It, it triggers things in our body chemically yeah. that keep us in a better mood, keep us more positive, and, and as we move more, we get more confident in being able to move more. It's true. And it just spreads to all areas of our life. Yeah. You know, stinking thinking will keep you stuck um, and keep you frustrated. Yeah. Right? I mean, what we think about shows up in our body immediately. If, if we started talking about it right now, where if I was to say, you know, just think back to a time that was the most stressful time in your life, right? When you, you woke up in the morning and it was just like, ah, oh, you didn't know how you're going to deal with it. And if you were to think on a situation right now, um, and, and if I was to pause and say, now check in with your body, you know, you, you probably feel that same stress 
that you felt that particular moment, right? The shoulders yeah. coming up, the, the shortness of the breath, like all that happens, all from the thought of thinking back to that moment. Yeah. Right? Um, and just like quickly right now, as we just did that and we can feel that, I, I felt that like right now, just the energy of that, like right now in that moment, the same thing happens in the present time, right? So our, our body doesn't differentiate the difference between the past, the present, or the future. It's just present. It's just right here, right now, based upon what's going on, especially with that dialogue that's going on in your head. Right. So yeah. step one, like once, so one, as we recognize the thoughts that are going on and then two going, where, where are my feelings in my body? Right. And, and then learning to retrain the body's response to these negative thinking or these thoughts that we have, these situations or these life changing opportunities that are showing up in our life and to begin, literally breathe through them. Right. And relax and kind of shift the body. I'm in mean, that particular way because some of the things that are going on. So what I'm not saying is, is just be positive and, you know, ignore these things that are happening in life and just have a good attitude, right? Because attitude is not everything. It is the difference maker. But right. what we have is the ability to choose, right? Is to kind of recognize what's going on. Okay, this is how I'm feeling. Yes, this sucks. Yes, this hurts. Here's what's going on. Yes, I'm frustrated about it. And my body feels this way. But the way that I want to feel is this, right? And I want to feel this way. And then now going into what would it look like to actually feel this way, to see it in your mind, to, to figure out some tangible step that can be that can you take but to tap into the feeling of what it'd be like and and feel how that takes present in in your body and tap into that energy and then move out of that inspired action that we create to begin to do that so so like shifting that 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 mindset reset and, and then finding that simple embodiment lifestyle application that we can do to 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 make it real and begin to do that so with that with the thoughts that we have it shows up in our body um, and then now we feel a particular way and then the, how we feel starts to trigger the mind and then now here we are right and so oh, wherever, you want to start, wherever you want to start that cycle you can start by shifting your body one cool thing with yoga is that the body cues the mind right so at the end of yoga usually they have this savasana pose where you lay there um i remember my my first time doing yoga which was yoga teacher training i've never done yoga before in my life and somebody said yoga was gonna change my life so i said okay and so i went to enroll to become a yoga teacher teacher trainer teacher and i've never done yoga before right i've done it backwards i stepped out of my comfort zone for the possibilities and at the end we're laying down still in this moment and my mind is racing like crazy and i'm thinking when can I move? When can I get up? Like, how much longer are we going to be laying here? Like, I'm ready to get up. And the teacher said something. I'm, I'm, I'm fidgeting around a little bit. And she says that constant movement of the mind, um, constant, constant movement of the body is a reflection of constant movement of the mind. I was like, wow, because I couldn't be still. And so my body was an indicator of what was going on in my mind, the thoughts that right. was, was happening. And she began to teach me that by laying still, I get to train my mind to be still and to slow down and to be there. So at the end of that class, I remember jumping up, like, all right, I'm out of here. I got to move. And it wasn't that much longer where at the end of the next, one of the other classes, we laid there at the end and I closed my eyes. I've been training my, my mind in a way where I closed my eyes. And then when I opened my eyes next, everyone was gone. There was nobody, nobody was there. I was, I was, I had no idea. Right. I, I, I created the, I finally was able to let go and to be still and allow my mind just to go there. Um, and that happens when we shift our body. Right. When we change our posture in that moment, when we move into we take on a posture of confidence and boldness or freedom, or whatever that is, we begin to send those signals to the mind um, as well. Um, so if somebody I love that you just went and jumped right into instructor classes because I'm kind of thinking about doing that myself mm -hmm. because the thing is the thing that I'm finding and this is part of stepping out of my comfort zone is I go to a yoga class and everybody there is 20 and 30 yeah. there's nobody like me mm. and and I kind of wonder how many other people like me yeah. would go to a yoga class and not stay because they feel out of place because everybody there is 20 and 30 
in cute little yoga pants, and we're not very cute in yoga pants anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Most of us, until we do yoga for a while. Right. We might be cute in yoga pants again. But so I've just been really thinking about the possibility of going through a class, and I even got information on a class that's a three month class here in my local area and to start teaching senior yoga and just call it that senior yoga and have it be for people that are older, you know, and, and, and kind of tailor it to, to maybe starting a little slower. Right. And having more options, um, to tweak it if you can't get on the floor. Yeah. You know, so that no matter what your movement level is, you can actually start doing it. And yes. so I've, I've really been pondering this a lot. So just to hear that you went straight to instructor class without yeah. ever having done yoga really kind of inspires me. Yeah. And, and, and you're kind of a rarity anyway, because there's not very many men in the world that teach yoga. I, 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 am, I am usually, usually the only male in, in, in most of my crowds. You know, yeah. I go on retreats that pull in my heart, and it turns out, like, I'm usually the only guy, or maybe there's a handful. Yeah, that's how we met. Right? Were, how many right? guys were at the retreat? Yeah. You uh, and one other you know, one, I and, and I felt right at home. Do you know what I mean? I and so it's, it's, it's all that, and it's in... You know, I'm very heart centered and, and like I want this is the deep this stuff that matters to me. Like yes, we can talk about sports and the, the this idea of what, what it's like to for the, the, the man, but like whatever. <laughs> like this is the real stuff right here that just yeah. fuels me, gets me fired up. And a few things come to mind. I, I think we all start the yoga journey the same way. Um, but we use wherever we are as as that that limiter. Maybe I'm too yeah. old or I've never done yoga, or look at everybody else. Yeah. Um, that was me. I, I, I went online and I bought these expensive pair of yoga pants, right? Because I wanted to look the part. Um, and then I show up to this heated class my first time, and everyone's half naked. And I'm like, I'm like, wow! And I'm like fully clothed. And I'm like, oh my gosh! And I'm like sweating. It was, it, it felt horrible. Like, oh my gosh! I'm, I realized like, this is yoga. It was like intense. And well, it was beautiful. And so it's in those moments to reframe, right? And choosing to show up again. Um, and then I remember just going back, okay, I'm now maybe comfortable to take off my shirt. Yeah. Or, or like wherever I am, like to be able to do that. And it's literally your own individual journey. I thought people were looking at me. No one cared. No one cared. And you cares. almost have to put yourself in a position to uncover the fact that, that yes, people care, but everyone is, in, everyone is on a journey just like you. Yeah. There's no judgment. And you know, and it's not even so about much that. about it's not even so much about the look, quote unquote, the look. It's about the movement, and and that's when I go to the yoga class with these younger girls. I just can't move as fast as they can. Yeah, and, and that's, that's okay. Just, that's just the gist of it, you know. And th that's okay. So if like, if you came to my class right now, um, you're going to see senior citizens. You're going to see the twenty. Dumb girls, you're gonna see the middle, you're gonna see somebody with injuries, you're gonna see someone who has a, a beautiful, what we call a beautiful like yoga practice, you're gonna see it all. And 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 one of the things that I've seen like in the yoga arena is we talk about no judgment, we talk about these modifications or what's going on, but it's really not embodied or really taught. Like what does yeah. that actually look like? Right? Because we say we're not gonna judge you, but all of a sudden you walk in there and you feel judged. Yeah. Sometimes that judgment is really is self-judgment. It's self-judgment. Right. Um, it's it's, it's, it's self-judgment, right? Yeah. And, and I'm perfectly willing to acknowledge that when I walk in there, I know that I don't mean anything to those girls. Yeah. They don't have time to give me a second thought. Mm -hmm. they're, they're there to clear their mind and get away from the kids for two hours. Yes. You know? yes. But at the same time, you know, it goes back to that, I don't want to be slowing anybody else down and I don't want to not keep up. And, and that is all that self judgment. Totally. And where I would go, like if I was talking to someone um, at a yoga class who was sharing that with me right now and saying, I don't want to slow anybody down. I'm just going to go into the back. If we were having a coaching conversation, what I would say to that person is, Ooh, I, I hear that, 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 Hey, you don't want to slow the class down. 
where else in your life do you feel like you have to step in the back of the room? Where else in yeah. your life do you feel like you don't want to be an inconvenience or what's going on? Because it's not so much even the yoga class. It's, that's actually a habit somewhere in life where it's, hey, I don't want to be an inconvenience somewhere. And, yeah. and that's what I do as an, as an empowerment coach in that way of like, where else is this showing up? Yeah. Right? And then how else is this an opportunity to begin to do that? Now, at the same point, we do want to be in an environment where you feel like you can actually grow and begin to do that. And yeah. a senior class would be fantastic because now you're in a, in a, cause one of those yoga classes is not for every senior. It's not for, for everyone. No. Right. Especially when it's, it is intimidating. Everyone's going at this pace. What I think is one of the most empowering thing. If someone wants to challenge and wants to feel empowered, I would say go to that class and choose not even what would happen if you chose not to go with the flow like what would happen if you actually honored your body what would happen if you declared just and you fixed the pipe yeah, you, know I'm going? Go. you see where i'm going, where we're going? Yeah. what would happen if you actually said you know what i am not going to go ahead and tap into this is for those who want to take bold action right and say i'm ready to i'm, I'm ready to break and shed like this belief and this guilt and, and hold people back just to go there and let the instructor know saying hey you know what I, i'm aware that here's what's going on um but i'm told yoga is about honoring my body and i'm just going to honor my body here and and do what feels good even in the midst of all these other people right i mean that's what i did when i when i put on my yoga shorts and i went into the class that one day and i was like you know what i still feel like people are looking i still feel like i'm being judged i still feel like these things are happening but i'm going to stand up inside myself right and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to do it scared i'm going to do it vulnerable i'm going to do it with these things that are going on anyway and put on these short shorts and like take these things off and let my belly go and hang out and and not be able to do the pose and I'm allow myself to fall down or whatever and not to be imperfect, to be messy. And I'm going to just do that. And I, I tell you what, that started a journey for me where it was out of my comfort zone. And then in the process of doing that, I felt free that I wasn't held to somebody else's expectations of what yoga is going to be like or how you had to move that, that I could actually face the wrong way and, and do it wrong. And, and be okay with that for myself. Yeah. And I walked out with my own pride and like, wow, here it is. Yeah. I didn't show up for that in that particular moment. And it was scary and it was vulnerable, but it was like fixing the pipe. It was freeing. It was like, yeah. where else in my life? Now, we also still want places we can go where we don't have to always put ourselves right. out there and feel right. safe and right. have that environment. And there's a balance to that. But what I was picking up with you talk about creating that with the seniors is is to do this work we can't do it alone um to create this shift to step out of the comfort zone and and you you know we sometimes we feel like we don't want anybody in or we don't want to share what's really what's going on but we have so much more in common than we do differences whether we're retired or we're getting our first job right we, right. we know we feel those same things and we're in this together but having support and accountability a community and a place to go to where you can actually voice this and, and feel this and allow it to be messy together is, is, is literally how you create that transformation and be able to move forward because life is going to happen, right? Things are going to come up, things are going to shift and change. And it's like when they do, you want to have that support and that accountability that's going to motivate you to keep going. You want to have that positive still coming and like this podcast, um, like where else can you be able to fill yourself up? Same way, a refrain from the question from earlier. How else yeah. can you fill yourself up so that when life is crazy, when, when you're hurting and in pain, you don't feel like doing it, it creates that spark in you to go ahead and, and do that because you are not alone and you don't yeah. have to figure it out by yourself. Um, so I'm excited about that idea with that, with that senior class and, and starting there. And how, what a fun challenge. How cool would it be to have a fun challenge of you get this senior class started and then from there as a fun challenge, hey, we're all going to show up to that at one yoga class. Yeah. <laughs> together, right? Together, right? We're like, gonna, like, here it is. We're gonna we're gonna, we're, we might even show up early on the front row and be yeah. like, here it is. And be able to, and how empowering is that for everybody else in the class to be like, oh my gosh. Yeah. To show up and to figure it out and to listen to their body and actually to see what it's like to listen yeah. to their body. I mean, they need you in that class as much. You, you see where I'm going? Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful thing. You know, and I have friends that are in their 70s that are doing yoga and 
and they inspire me just to to see you know how much they do and and they're living vibrant lives you yeah. know because it's not just yoga that they're doing it's it's everything in their life that they're doing and yeah. and that's what i want to empower people to do too and that's awesome um, so do you have any retreats coming up um, I do. I'm waiting for some dates right now, but I'm going to have a, a West Coast retreat pretty pretty soon here. Um, if anyone wants to know more about any retreats that I have coming up, they can literally visit me at fiddleford.com. Um, and it's being updated right now, and you'll be able to see retreat information. You can subscribe to find out what's coming up next and where things are, where I'll be in the world, and uh, be able to have that. And if there's someone awesome. who's planning a retreat, I'll also come in and help support the retreat as well. Um, and where can people follow you on Facebook? And Absolutely. All those other social media things. <clears throat> totally, totally. So you can look me up, Fidel Ford, F I D E L F O R D E. You'll find my Facebook page um, there on Facebook. Um, you'll also find my, my private page. I have in the glass house. You can see all the things that are happening. Um, if you're on Instagram, you can look up Fidizzle. That's a, that's a nickname a client gave to me. And so Thomas has got to fedizzle the situation. That's F-I-D-E-Z-Z-L-E. So if you need a little fedizzle in your life, you can just go ahead and send me a message, hop on the page, follow me, and that information is there. And what I would love to do for, for your, your, your listeners, um, Vicki, is go ahead and, and go and gift them a simple yoga flow. Um, that's going to get them in tune with their bodies and be able to move. Um, and so I will create that. Um, later on today, and I will send you that link if you want to put that in the description. Oh, that's um, awesome. You can opt in that and kind of awesome. just, just tap into that and feel the energy and, and feel the flow and kind of take some of the things that we talked about and put it into a movement in a simple way to show how simple and easy it is, how easy it is for, for, for things to shift. Um, well, so I'll create I, that and send it out to you. That'd be awesome. And I will tell uh, my listeners, I have watched Fidel many times on Facebook Lives with just doing the most beautiful movements and so graceful and also with children crawling all over him and he still never misses a beat. And when you were talking about athletes, I thought, you know, there, there is no athlete on the planet that can say that they are any better, or any stronger than you because watching you do some of the things you do is just amazing to me. And especially when you've got a little one, you know, Thank trying you. to hang on while you strike a pose and he's trying to strike the same Come pose out of nowhere, like, oh, on your back, okay. you know? <laughs> it's true. I just thought that was precious. So totally. I just want to thank you, my friend. I have missed your energy. Um, I know we just had a little bit of time together at the retreat in Washington, but I just really felt a connection with you and and you just have such a beautiful energy and such a beautiful spirit and and I really have enjoyed spending time with you tonight and again um, your Facebook or your website is fidelford.com and that's F-I-D-E-L F-O-R-D-E dot com I'm easy to get in touch with yep and uh Anybody that wants to follow me, you can do that on VickiWashburn.com or on Facebook at My Life Redesigned and the same on Twitter and Instagram. And I hope you all have a vibrant week and go about and have a vibrant life. Thanks for tuning in. Post up the Boomer's Guide to a Vibrant Life. Connect with Vicki at www.globalvoiceradio.com. Tune in next week for another edition of the Boomer's Guide to a Vibrant Life on Global Voice Radio, where your message and your voices are heard.